Hey everyone, this is Sean again. Uh, in this video, I'll be showing you the noodle arm setup, which is the setup I came up with a couple of years ago, actually a year ago. And it's what I've been asked the most about, so I thought I'd finally make a tutorial video about it. So I'm going to jump right in. Uh, hopefully, you know a little bit about rigging before going into it, because I'm not really going to delve into the freezing and the orientation of joints, which is important. Um, but for this video, we don't really need to emphasize on that too much. So I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Okay, so what we want to do first is make a regular chain, or the chain for the arm itself, um, just a simple four joint chain. One for the shoulder, elbow, wrist, and I like to do the hand. Um, it helps the orientations, and it also for game rigs, uh, it's kind of a necessity when you want them to hold things. We're going to need to build, this is where it gets a little bit uh, tricky. We're going to move this to the top, uh, this chain here. This is going to be a sort of a template. And make two more chains. Hit G. And just do it again. And add a hand joint for this one right here. Make sure it's straight. Okay. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to snap these joints to the template. Hold V, snap, take the child joint, and snap. And we're going to do the same thing for the next. Snap it, take the wrist, snap it there, and then you're going to take the child and snap it in place. Okay, so we don't need this template one for right now. This will end up being a FK or IK chain, whatever you want it to be uh, later on. But for right now, I'm going to make it invisible because we just want these two. So we're going to pull these down to the arm. And now we don't need to see the arm anymore, so we can make that invisible. <coughs> okay, so we have our chain and what we're going to start doing now is inserting joints in between. This is what's going to give uh, the noodle effect. This is how the arm is actually going to bend. It can't really bend with, you know, three or four joints. So we're going to insert a joint. I'm going to say three. Uh, depends on the length of the arm, but for this setup right now, I'm going to just add three. So one, two, uh, that was a little bit too close. One, two, three. There are ways to make it perfect, um, perfectly spaced apart, but I don't really see the point um, in making them perfectly spaced because the human skeleton isn't mathematically perfect, so it's just, uh, i rather eyeball it. I think it gives a, a better effect in the end, actually, personally. Um, so we're going to go ahead and insert again for the next just three, even though it's a little bit bigger. One, two, three. Okay, perfect. So you should have something that looks like this uh, by the time you're you're done. All right. So remember, these are still two chains. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the second part invisible. We don't need it right now. Um, we're going to add a spline set up to both parts, but for now, just this one. Going to go to option box. Make sure it's root on curve, auto parent curve, auto create curve, simplify, and number of spans is one. That's the settings you should have right now. You're going to click the second joint and the second before last. Now we're going to select the vertices of the of the curve and turn those into clusters. So you would select the you can do any order, but you s I would select the last uh, vertice, go to create deformer, and cluster. So you select the next one, hit G to repeat the last action, turn into a cluster, cluster, and cluster. So, okay, so we have our four. Um, these are what we're going to add controls to at the end to manipulate it, but as you can see now, when I move it, it moves the chain, sort of like a noodle. Okay, so we're going to do the next, or the same thing for the other half. We're going to make this invisible. We don't need this anymore. Make this visible. 
Okay, it's going to be a little different in terms of where we make the curve. Uh, we're going to make a spline again, start from the beginning this time, and remember that this is the wrist joint, not this one. So we're going to make it right here, right before the wrist joint. Uh, this is where our new curve is going to be. Uh, by the way, you should really, really uh, be naming everything. This is really bad practice, but uh, just trying to get things uh, get things going in this video. Um, so what we're going to do now is start grouping. Um, the groups is what's going to be manipulated by the FK and IK uh, joint chains, um, not the joints themselves in this setup. So we're going to take all of the clusters, the IK chain and the joint chain itself and put a group. And we're going to do the same thing for the second half <coughs> and make that a group. We're going to take the pivot of each group um, and snap it to the first joint. So you select the group, hit insert, hold V, and snap it to the beginning, right here, for the first one. For the second group, you do the same thing, except we want it here. And there you go. So now when you select this group, oh, hit insert again to go back to the object. And when you move it, if you notice the joints here when we move them are way ahead of the clusters. This is where the joints should be. Uh, what's happening is they're tra double transforming because the group which we moved moves the joint chain and the curve that it's attached to is also moving it. So it's moving double what we want it to. To fix that we open up the group, select the curve, go to curve 2. That should be a different name, uh, the first uh, section of what you're going to do and go to inherit transform and click it. It'll snap back. And you want to do the same thing for the curve of the first group. Uh, and that fixes that problem. Now when we select the group and move it, there you go. It all stays in the same spot. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and move that back. Okay, so we have the noodle effect sort of working. Um, what we're going to do now is start connecting both chains. Uh, what's easier for me to do, uh, what I usually do is I just take the first joint of the second chain and make it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to turn this from 0 0.6 to about 1. Um, and now it's easier to select both joints without having to open the entire hierarchy or uh, select them in MEL. So what we're going to do now is select this uh, joint and select the last one second and we're going to parent constrain them. So now when we move this cluster it's going to be more big. Uh, it's going to take forever. There we go. When we select this cluster it moves the second part of the arm as well. So there you go. <coughs> And also, when you move the group, it still maintains that solid elbow. Now it's time to put everything together. Uh, well, let me get this back in there. Alright, so what we have to do now is we're going to make the original chain, which we will just pretend would be the FK, uh, and we would snap this, remember, hold V, snap it. Snap it back into uh, its position, its original position. <coughs> Uh, and we're going to start parent constraining this template arm, the FK arm, to the groups that we've just made. Um, so open up the hierarchy of the first chain. This is called this FK. There we go. Uh, we're going to hold shift and click the plus sign and it opens up the entire hierarchy. <coughs> and we will hold FK, or we will select the FK and then the first group control um, and parent. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing. We just take the second joint, select the second group, and then we will 
parent constraint those as well. And finally, we will take the wrist joint and try to select the There we go. And we're going to parent constrain that as well. <coughs> now, let's just take this. Okay. If we select the shoulder, and rotate it, or our moves, take the wrist or the elbow, and then if you take the wrist, that moves as well. So you have an arm working. This is following an FK. For an IKFK setup, you would connect them the same way, it's just, or you would create it the same way. You would just connect it to the groups themselves instead of the joints, as you've probably seen in other uh, demonstrations. Um, so to put this into demonstration, we're going to go ahead and make the geometry visible again. Select the joint chains within each group. and then we will select the geometry skin, bind skin, smooth bind and we're going to go ahead and just to make the clusters easier to select we're going to turn off the nerves we're going to turn off the uh, joints and just select these IKs and make them invisible so now you can move and manipulate the clusters to create that noodle effect in the arm um, and just kind of make really dynamic poses and such like that. You would connect your controls to the clusters um, and that's how you would manipulate those when you with the more finished product. Uh, also you can still uh, move the elbow and the wrist and the shoulder uh, just as normal but now you have those extra manipulators for a more uh, dynamic effect. Um, obviously some skinning that you would have to go in as well but basically the, uh, the setup itself is working. So thank you for watching. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Please subscribe to our channel and check out our Facebook page.